morning. And, and again, we are in a series right now uh, on, the, on the book of, of 1 Peter. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting book. It, it was written at a, a crazy time period when Christians were being martyred in just a crazy way. The, the emperor at the time would, would take Christians and light them on fire, put them on a post to be a light for the road. Um, the, the current emperor, when this was written, burns down the town, blames the Christians so he can persecute them for it. I, I mean, they're just going through it. And, and, and Peter writes this book. And, and um, I, I've said this all, all every week since we started the series, but I think I'm going to say it every week because I just, I really do think it's, it's a theme. And, and it's simply this. What distinguishes God's people from the rest of the world, from everybody else, what distinguishes God's people is how they respond to disappointments, how they handle conflict, and how they maintain hope during suffering. It's not the favorite message, right? Like, we'd rather just say, hey, how about the blessing message? Right? How about the message where everything turns out right? How about the how about the Disney version? You know, where in 30 minutes the whole story gets wrapped up, the TV version. But that's that's really not the life that we live. And I wrote down this thought in my notes this morning: Will you maintain who you are when it doesn't look like it's paying off? Will you maintain who you are? When it doesn't look like it's paying off, or have you gotten so bitter that you've changed you because of a temporary season of your life? It's so many of us, that's, that's, the, that's the deal, like how we deal with conflict, how we answer the stuff, right? Here's, here's, here's the encouragement for the day, you ready? If you're, if you're not in a storm, then one's on its way. Right? That's the encouragement. And we go, how is that encouragement? Because it gives you the opportunity to live like Jesus. Because that's what he did. He, he lived hope when there was no hope. He lived from an eternal perspective. He just knew how to deal with conflict. Conflict. That drove me to a story. Man comes home to his wife, and she's had that day. Come on, ladies. Everything at work is jacked up. The kids are demon spawn today. And, and she's having a day, right? And, and, and she goes, look, I don't care what we do, just take me to someplace expensive. So he thinks about it, he's like, all right, let me change my clothes. He goes to change his clothes, comes back, they jump in the car, he takes her to the gas station. <laughs> that was not a good night. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? How you deal with conflict is important, would you say? Yes? Yeah, how, how we answer the, the interesting things of the world. So let's, let's jump right in. Uh, first Peter and the very first word we're gonna read today is gonna make you cringe The whole topic that we're gonna talk about today Man, is this a, a word that in our culture draws some response first Peter chapter 2 verse 13 starts with the word submit Don't you love that word? Is that your favorite? Anybody? Is that your favorite? No, absolutely not. But listen to this submit yourselves for the Lord's sake. So why are you doing it? For the Lord's sake. Submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every human authority. Whether to the emperor. Wait a minute. Don't you remember what I just described as the emperor? When he writes this, that's who he's talking about. He's talking about Nero. Right? Submit yourself to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors, and basically he's kind of saying it doesn't matter all the way down, like he could list it all the way down to city managers and city commissioners and right police chiefs and all this. He's given us a hierarchy idea here. So whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. Man, in our current culture, talking about submission is like fingernails on the chalkboard, somebody. Come on, y'all. Right? Like... None of us really like that word. A lot of us are struggling with, I don't really know if I can do that. What does that look like? And so I had this thought, why? Why is that so fingernails on the chalkboard? I got a couple of thoughts. One, because we're sons and daughters of Adam, who's the original rebel. Come on, y'all. It is in our nature that when somebody says, don't touch the table, 
right? We're, we're, we have a sinful nature inside of us. Two, we're Americans. And rebellion is part of our national identity. I have rights. Right? Do you? You have all the rights to do whatever you want, whenever you want. Number three, the value we place on the freedom of speech seems to foster rebellion. Now, don't, 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 don't go, whoa, whoa, Pastor Mike's about to turn into some kind of communist or something. No, the freedom of speech is important, and we need it, and I prize it. But there's this openness in our culture, right? This current free speech makes us talk about authorities like they're idiots. Makes us become very disrespectful. You, you hear this when you listen to talk radio or on the TV talking heads. You know those two places where all the collective wisdom of the universe comes from? You hear people talk about politicians like they're just absolute idiots. What Biden needs to do is blah, 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 blah. And what the Congress, blah, blah, blah. blah. And, and, and can I say this to you this morning? You don't think their advisors have already talked about that? You, you think we're so smart that we've come up with something that they haven't already talked about in the process? And so it, it does, you know, I, I believe our freedom of speech often makes us revel in trashing authority. Sometimes we forget how unusual freedom of speech is. There's a lot of places where you speak out, you're going to prison. Right? Don't get me wrong. Again, I love that we have freedom of speech. We need freedom of speech. It just feeds into a culture that has gotten to a place that likes to despise authority. And that's a dangerous place. Here, here, here's the other one that I thought. We are post-1960s. Right? Where, where rebellion became a civic virtue. Which in some ways can be good, right? Like civil rights. Duh. That's fantastic. Right? In other ways, not so good. Like rebelling against deodorant. It's not a good one. <laughs> right? It's, it's not a good one. Okay? Um, yeah, and, and can I go ahead and say it? Um, rebe rebe rebelling against wearing bras. Ladies, please don't do that. that causes all kinds of problems. Right? Causes all kinds of problems. Right? But listen to me. The whole point, the whole point is that insubordination is part of our cultural ethos. It, it, it's become normal. It's become normative to the way we interact. It's, it's almost just the air we breathe. And so, you know, many of us are post-1960s American sons and daughters of Adam. Maybe the only people more rebellious, rebellious than that is Texans. It's a joke. I'm kidding. I'm picking on my Texans. I'm just kidding, right? Don't tread on them. Don't, don't mess with Texas, Right? But really, so many of us find ourselves kind of at an impasse when it comes to this concept. You know, I read this verse, but everything inside of me pushes back. Anybody? Anybody? Am I the only person? Sub submit. <laughs> submit? I mean, why? It's because the enemy whispers in our ear. Don't let them get the best of you. If, if they are wrong, then you have the right to attack. We struggle with this because we don't totally grasp the definition of submit or submission. So I want to give you maybe it might, be, it might be a new concept to you today. But there is a difference between submit and obey. There's a difference between submit and obey. Submit is to yield or give way. As a matter of fact, in the original text, in the Greek, submit and obey are similar but two different words. Submit is hupotasso. And here's what it actually means. To place in order. To make things orderly. So the necessary, what God says is, I'm going to put some order for your benefit, and I need you to put, submit to the order that I put into place. Understand? The, the Greek word for obey, obey is just to do what another orders you to do. It's hupokuo. And it's to obey or to obe obedient. Let me say it to you this way. Obedience is, is following orders, commands, or instructions. Uh, it is a, a, a reaction to a command where the individual has little choice to reject or oppose the authority. It's just obey. Right? 
Submission is yielding to power or authority. In submission, a person has respect and honor for those in power. Unlike in obedience, listen to this, where the individual succumbs to power merely as a reaction to power, in submission, the individual's reaction is guided by a genuine desire to follow instructions. I'll say it to you this way. Submission is about honor. Submission is about honor. I don't have to like you. I don't have to agree with you. I don't even always have to obey you, especially if it's a command that's ungodly. But I honor you because God has put you in that position today. I hope this morning you believe in the sovereignty of God. God is sovereign. Would, would most of you agree with that? In other words, he's in control of all things, including who's president and who's city manager and who's governor and who's the boss at work right now and who got the promotion and on and who's your teacher, student, and who's your principal. Like if he's sovereign, he's in charge and over all things. Submission, listen to me, is not agreeing on everything. Submission is not leaving your brain at the door. Submission is not never giving your opinion. You can give your opinion and still be submissive in your attitude and the way you honor. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Submission is not putting the will of the leader above Christ. And submission is not living or acting in fear. You can be submissive to authority and not obey at the same time. I'm going to come back to that because some of you are going, eh, I'm trying to put that. I'll come back to that in just a moment. But let me read to you from Romans 13 and 1, the, the other place that talks about this. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do will bring judgment on themselves. That's powerful, y'all. When uh, I've told the story numerous times, but when, when uh, Pastor Ron, who's now one of our overseers, when he was the pastor and I was his youth pastor and he fired me, I was mad. Man, I was, I was even more hot-tempered back then, right, as this young know-it-all kid. And I was mad. And then I was like, I could say this and I could talk about that. Because, I mean, nobody's perfect, right? You get to know me long enough, you're going to know the, the stupid stuff I do and, and my warts and my, my, my wounds and my struggles. But God gave me this verse. And he made me say this verse over and over every day. So you are never to be rude or disrespectful. So I stood on the stage three weeks after he fired me at church. I still don't remember why he let me on that stage. I don't know that I would put somebody on stage that I had fired three weeks ago. But he put me in front of the church and I read that verse to them and I said, church, this is God's church. It's not Ron's or Mike's or anybody else, but Ron is our pastor. And you are to submit whether you like it or not, whether you agree or not. Here's what's so hard for us as Americans. I got rights and all this sort of stuff. Here's a hard one. If God wanted you to fix it, he could put you in charge. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. If God thought you had it all figured out, He'd have given you the promotion. If God thought you were the, the man or the woman for, of the hour, he would make that happen. But in the meantime, he's building something inside of you. And he's probably building something inside of you through submission. Through having to be honoring and kind when you don't agree. I rewrote that verse for Mike, just for me, and I rewrote, my lack of honor for people in authority puts on, my dis on display my lack of trust in God. 
and could bring God's judgment on me and my family. Romans 12 and 10 says this, be devoted to one another in love. Can I reword that? Hey, Republican, be devoted to the Democrats in love. Hey, Democrat, be devoted to the Republicans. Hey, Libertarian, figure out which way you're going. I'm just kidding. That's a joke. <laughs> just trying to make you laugh because it's kind of tense, right? But now listen to this. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. There's no clause there. Unless you disagree, then you can trash them on Facebook or Twitter or whatever else. Right? No, 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 no. So, so that led me to the question. What are the governing authorities? Well, there are some very specific governing authorities that God has put in place in our culture. Let me walk through a, a few of those with you that the scripture very clearly talks about. Number one, governmental authority. Governmental authority. God, God puts governments in place. He puts kings and he puts presidents and he puts people in place for our benefit, for our betterment. I was thinking about how do I... How do I describe to you? How do you be submissive and not necessarily obey at the same time? So I had this thought. I've, numerous times now I've had the opportunity to be on the other side of getting pulled over by the police. Anybody ever sat there and license and registration had to do that whole thing? Well, I've been on the outside of the car now, right? And stood there and said, now, for those of you who know, um, if, you, if you walk up and, and, and if, if the police officer says, uh, you say, well, officer, what, what happened? You were speeding. No, I wasn't speeding. I looked down. I wasn't speeding. No, I, you were speeding. I got you speeding. License and registration, please. But hey, you've got a decision to make, right? You've got a decision to make on what kind of attitude you're going to have. How, 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 what your voice inflection is going to sound like. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Here's what I know if I'm not speeding. Here's what I'm going to do in that moment. Submission to his authority at the moment would say, here's my license and registration. Yes, I'm going to sign this because I'm supposed to. Now I'm going to court and fighting this junk because I don't believe it's true. But I do it still honoring the authority that is put in place. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Right? There's a way for us to be honoring in what we do. Listen to me. Pay your taxes. Jesus said, give to Caesar what is Caesar, pay your taxes. Now, they've written all kinds of great code that you can take this off and write that off. Hey, use that. Go for it. Don't cheat. Right? But, but listen to me, pay your tax. Listen to me. Vote. Get registered to vote. You need to vote. If you're not voting, you are so un-American. Can I just say it that way? Now, let me change that. If you don't vote, you're not actually following Jesus. Because I think he would say, you need to take part in the betterment of your culture, to walk away from your culture, to walk away from the people, to just say, never mind, and walk away. I, I, I can't see that being the heart of Jesus. Now listen, give your opinion. But give your opinion in a way that is honoring. Give your opinion in a way that is, I, I, why am I talking about this? I don't know, God had us go here because we're about to walk into the silly season, right? We're about to walk into crazy election cycle and everybody's going to have a million opinions. Let me just say to you, whatever opinion you post online ain't going to make a hill of beans different, but your attitude will. Your attitude will speak volumes of who you are and what you represent. And so Jesus says, submit to authority. You don't have to obey everything. If, if it's outside of what God calls you to do, then you can say no, but you can say no with a heart of submission, with a heart that says, I still honor the authority that is put in place. Authority number two would be work or school authority. This is daytime authority. This is, this is where we spend a lot of our day. There's authority at work. There's principals at school. There's teachers at school. There's, there's the boss. There's the, these are your daytime hours. And I don't have a time, time to really flesh out all of these. So right next to that, would you write, this, write these down real quick? Write down Colossians 3, 22 through 4, 1. Colossians 3, 22 through 4, 1. And maybe do your own, take that this week and say, I want to read that and see how it applies to me at work. 
how can I be more honoring at work? When I look back in my, in my life, I am that fiery, can be know it all personality. I don't know how many times in my life I was right and so wrong. Because I was right, but I killed the relationship. I was right. But the boss wasn't going to raise me up because I was a pain in the behind. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying to you? There's a different way for us to understand how Jesus would have us serve authorities. The third area of authority that God gives us is family authority. It's family authority. Parents, let me give you a little side note for a moment. Teach your children the interrupt rule. You know what the interrupt rule is? They should never interrupt somebody when they're talking. Let's start there, okay? You don't interrupt somebody when they're talking. We don't, we, we don't interrupt people when they're talking. That's rude. Now, I also heard somebody this week say, I come from the generation where it was like, <laughs> you, you are to be seen and never heard unless spoken to. Now, we're not talking about that. That's a, that's a crazy you know, way of living. But, but hear, hear me on this. Here's the interrupt rule. Teach your children, if it's an emergency, Come up and put your hand on my side. And then I will say, I'm sorry, excuse me. If they're about to explode, if somebody's bleeding, if their bladder is about, right? But teach them why. Because we're not teaching honor of authority. I see people interrupting people all day long. It drives me crazy. This is kind of one of those pet peeve things for me. But the family unit, the fact that God says, The man is to lead the home and the wife is to submit to the husband. Now we're redefining submit here. That doesn't mean obey. That doesn't mean to be a doormat. But the reality being that no honor is what it says. Why? Because every man's basic need is respect. Ladies, you show him respect. He will return love to you. Love and respect cycle. Look it up on Right Now Media that we have for you for free. Submission is something that I, I feel like is a virtue that is disappearing hearing in our culture because we have this freedom to just spew whatever we think or whatever we want to say the last area is spiritual authority spiritual authority in other words there's structure and authority to the church right so we give honor to i'll be very very transparent with you for a moment it's very awkward for me to have pastor doug on our staff and the reason being is I think he's smarter than me. And he's he's a little bit older than me, just a little bit, right? But oftentimes the stuff I'm going through and trying to learn right now, he's done four or five times already. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? But what I find in Pastor Doug is I find this. This is a man who's run huge, large churches way bigger than this one. This is a man who's listened to and hundreds of countries across the world every day in his podcast, Walking with Jesus. But he is constantly honoring and submitting to me. That feels really, really awkward to have an elder do that to me. Because I grew up in the South. And in the South, we say, we put Mr. or Mrs. in front of your name if you're older than us. We say yes, ma'am, and we say no, ma'am. Do you understand? Like, this is, this is honor. But the reality of of watching, I'm humbled at the way he submits to me as the lead pastor. And he didn't have to do that. But he does it because Jesus drives him to that. Are you you hearing what I'm saying to you? Submission to authority. First Peter goes on. Let's get back into this. First Peter 2.15. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence ignorant talk of foolish people. If if we will do this, if we will learn to be honoring, if we will learn to be submissive in our hearts and and have a little humility about the way we approach things, we'll hush the foolish talk out there. Listen to this. Live as free people. You are free. Anybody grateful for freedom? Absolutely. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. That's where that freedom of speech thing comes in. I can't just say whatever I want to say. I'm an ambassador of Christ. I'm an ambassador of the gospel. 
I'm an ambassador of love and hope. But if I'm rah, 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 you're not getting that. You're just getting one silly man's opinion. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. But that's a different mentality, right? When I get up in the morning, what, what do you want from me, God? Whatever you want, wherever you want me to go, what do you, where do you want me to be? Who do you want me to talk to? Who do you want me to love today? Show proper respect to the people you agree with. Is that what it says? What does it say? Everyone. Show proper respect to everyone. Why? Because they deserve it? No, because they're created in the image of God. They may be a really broken version right now. Come on, somebody. People driving the left lane are a really broken version of that right now. That guy at your office, that jerk in your English class. They are a really broken version, but show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of the believers. Fear God, and listen to this repeat. Honor the emperor. Honor the emperor. Honor those that I've put in place to be in authority. Let me finish this out. First Peter 2 and 18. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect. Now, this is kind of the employer-employee, teacher-student type of relationship. Be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, right? Not just the good and gentle teacher, but the jerk teacher. Not only to the good and gentle boss, but the hammer boss that just, man, never says anything positive. Listen to this, not only to the good and the gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing when mindful of God, why are we doing this? It was back at the beginning. Why are we doing this? For the Lord's sake. Mindful of God, one endures sorrow while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you are sinned or you are beaten for it, you endure, but if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. You want to please God? Any, anybody want to please God? Anybody want God to be happy with you? That just said, then endure it with honor. Show compassion to the unjust. Understand you're doing it for my sake. And here's what's so cool about God. He'll repay you for it. Right? He'll repay you for it. Every time somebody bad mouths you and you choose not to retaliate. For to this, you have been called. Wow, that's powerful. Anybody here struggling with purpose? I just read it to you. For this is what you've been called to, to suffer well. To in the midst of unjust, in the midst of somebody wronging you, that you would bless them in return, that you would be kind in return, that you would be honoring them. For this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you. Leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin. Neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. Did you hear that? When they posted junk about Twitter about him, he didn't say anything. When they spit in his face, he didn't respond. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. Continued entrusting himself. I trust you, God. You will make things right. You will make things right. I will be honoring and not retaliate in this moment because I trust the creator of the universe in the end or at some point will make all things just. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness by his wounds you have been healed for you were straying like sheep but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls wow what a powerful set of verses why would god have us do this 
a couple thoughts to close. Why would God have us do this? Because it breaks hatred. Fighting and arguing. Kindness and honor. In our submission to human authority, let us learn to trust God in the few things that I want to recap the previous verses. Here's the first one. Trust that God is intimately involved in every detail of life. Found that in verse 13. Intimately involved in every detail of life. He knows. He knows. He knows about that weenie at work. He knows about your neighbor. He knows what's going on over here. He knows about that kid in your English class. He knows. He's intimately involved in every detail of life. Here's the next one. Trust that God says we need restraint. Anybody here need restraint? Anybody here need restraint for your tongue? If your hand's not up, you need some counseling. Like, we, we need restraint. We need to have authority, and that's why it's there. Trust that it's God's will for us to do good. I should have finished that with, in the midst of bad. It's his will. Our flesh says, no, 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 don't, don't let them get the best of you. You better. Quick, quick personal story, now I'll close. Two weeks ago, my wife got in an accident, cars totaled. She was hit by a sheriff's deputy. <laughs> Wasn't Scott. I got to the scene, and come on, y'all, your, your wife's shaking, and her car's crushed, and all. I got to the scene, and, and I wasn't Pastor Mike. You know what I'm saying? I was Mike. You know what I'm saying? I was not happy. And in my head, I'm like, I'm calling the sheriff. Run, run. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. I'm as human as you are. I started thinking about this teaching. The Holy Spirit said to me, 24 years you have been building relationships in this community. Now, we bought our car pre-COVID. We could have sold our car now for more than we paid for it back then. And we're not going to get the full value for it. So my wife is going to probably have to downgrade her car a little bit. We're going to get less money. Like, I feel wrong. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? But it's 24 years of relationship and developing a reputation in this community worth a $23,000 car? So we went and bought a car yesterday. It's a little, it's about as fancy as her one that we had before. And we're going to let this kind of play out and all this, and we may get, I don't know if we'll get wronged. I don't know if we'll get fixed or whatever. But here's what I know. God is God, anybody, y'all? And what's so much more important is how, does the, how do the people around us and how do the community see us respond when conflict comes? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Last one. Trust that everyone deserves proper honor. Why? Because they're created in the image of God. I get it. You can picture four or five people right now that you go, I don't know about that one. They're still created in the image of God. Let us be Jesus' people. And Jesus' people... Learn submission as a form of honoring people. Or you understand what I'm saying to you? Somebody here today needs to make a phone call or a text message. Somebody needs to walk into a boss's office tomorrow and say, please forgive me for my attitude. Even if they're a jerk and they respond still as a jerk. Some teenager in here needs to go to their parent and say, I am so sorry for being dishonoring not submitting to you. Let me tell you something. There's a number of people in this community that do that and you will see God move like we've never seen God move. When we become a people who are kind and loving and submissive, we don't, we're, I'm not talking about doormats. Are you hearing me? This is who Jesus has called us to be. Submit and see what Jesus might do in your life. Father, thank you for the challenge today. And I repent. I repent of my lousy attitude. The way I've been rude and the way
way I've just said, I've got rights and I can say whatever I want. Because I don't have rights. I am your bondservant. I am here bought with the precious blood of your son. And now I give my life in return back to you in surrender. So help us, God. Where do we need to bring submission into our lives? Where do we need to apologize? Where do we need to fix our attitudes that we understand we are doing these things for your sake and you will make all things just in the end? Now give us courage because it sounds really good sitting in these chairs. But give us courage to walk out next. close now with worship. You're welcome to go or stay. Um, Life Steps starts today. So those of you who haven't been to Life Steps, we're headed over to Life Steps in the Rock. Opportunity to learn more about the church. Would you stand on your feet, finish in worship. Love you guys. We'll see you next week.